A good day with fibromyalgia can be a little bit of fatigue, a little bit of brain fog, a little bit of pain, or I have so much internal inflammation that literally my skin hurts. The pain is, you can't get away from it. There are times when I'm in so much pain that I can't hug my kids and they need that. And they wanna to go to the park and I can't take them because I don't have enough strength. Uh, um, play park. Is it the uh, play park. After. Uh, play park. After. Uh, play park. After, baby. It's very depressing being in chronic pain. Out of all my despair, the first time I came out of the tank weeping, <laughs> because I had a moment of, of peace, you know, in my body and in my spirit. So there's joy in, in the tank as well, which is rare in my life. It's just been a tremendous blessing. I think the hardest part of dealing with fibromyalgia every day is I'm never free. Being a mom with fibro means that I can't attend every event because sometimes I can't even take care of myself. So it's a lot to ask of my husband. It's a lot to ask of family, but for kids, it's, it's not fair. They shouldn't have to understand that and they, they really don't. They understand that mommy's sick. They understand that mommy's tired. You know, I worry about the long-term effects of that and I'm missing out. You know, my husband will take them to the park and that's memories that I don't get to build with them because I'm stuck on the couch and it's, it's angering, it's frustrating, it's terrible. Floating is very interesting in that how difficult it is to articulate exactly what goes on here. The general idea is you have a enclosed room, it's about the size of a walk-in closet, and inside there, there's a big bathtub, really large bathtub, like bigger than you can imagine. And in that 11 inches of water, there's over 1,300 pounds of dissolved Epsom salt. Epsom salt provides the buoyancy to help you float in water with no effort. So of course, that's a very unique sensation to be able to float with no effort. The water is also matched to the temperature of your skin. It's about 95 degrees. So after a while, you lose the perception of where your body ends and the water begins. Um, also, when you turn off the light, um, it's completely dark in there, like black. And it's soundproof as well. So we are reducing the inputs or the stimulation to your brain. And by doing that, this is what creates or promotes this really deep, relaxed or meditative-like state. I was diagnosed with fibromyalgia about 10 years ago it took about four years for that diagnosis to actually finalize. The tricky thing with fibromyalgia is there's about 80 different symptoms and in order to pinpoint and finally diagnose that you have fibromyalgia you have to go through this trial and error period of is it MS, is it lupus, is it rheumatoid arthritis, is it arthritis, is it something neurological, is it something gastro. You'd think after four years of what do I have and what is causing this plaguing feeling on my entire body and my brain. You'd think that I'd feel relief, but really a fibromyalgia diagnosis feels pretty hopeless because once you have that mark, they still don't know what to do with you. Doctors still don't know what to do with you. Essentially, we're the world's only laboratory studying the neurobiology of flotation. We're, we're really trying to understand how it works in both the body and the brain. And most importantly, how we could translate that information into helping people who suffer from high levels of stress and anxiety. And when I stumbled upon floating, I immediately recognized that this could be a very useful sort of technology to uh, establish those healthy brain-body connections. And what I think we're finding is the brain circuits that are changing in here are quite profound. The circuits that tend to be overactive in people who are suffering dampen their connectivity and activation post float. And so for the first time, we're starting to get a clue as to how floating is affecting the human brain. And to me, that's going to be some of the most exciting discoveries that come out of this lab.
So far, the most successful treatment I've found with fibromyalgia is a combination of diet and managing my stress because it's an autoimmune disease, so it impacts your adrenals. So I'm constantly in stress. My body is constantly in stress. And when your body's constantly in stress, your, your reaction time is slower because you're in constant adrenal fatigue. And it's really kind of terrifying to know that I don't react the same way that most people react, especially when I've got kids and you know my husband and I wanna be able to be fast if they need me to be. But I'm in this weird jello mode sometimes where I can't get out of it. Right now, everything is preliminary. We're the first people who have developed tools to actually measure these things during the float itself. But what I could tell you is, looking at this preliminary data, we are finding very large drops in all the, the primary indicators of stress. We're seeing blood pressure going way down. We're seeing heart rate going way down. We're seeing respiration going way down. We're seeing your brain waves going way down. Essentially, your entire nervous system is going into a state of quiescence or relaxation. So any sort of stress-related ailments are obviously going to get some degree of benefit from flotation. Now, in terms of things outside of the, the domain of stress and anxiety, one of the, the clearest findings in research that's been published so far in floating is it does reduce pain. Floating has been a lifeline for me. I have severe fibromyalgia. It's really hard to explain fibromyalgia to people who haven't had it. I wish somebody could just like touch my forehead for a second just to feel what it's like. On a good day, I feel like I've had a bad car crash. On a good day, it's like you've jumped out of a plane and the chute didn't open. And in the water, I am weightless. I have motion. I can move my arms and my legs and everything moves with effortlessness. I don't sleep. I get about 10 hours of sleep a week and the floating triples my sleep. So I get a respite from the pain, which is great, um, but I also get some sleep, which can be restorative. So um, I get happiness in the tank and it, it helps me have hope when I'm home, you know, that I might get better. Uh, hello. Hello. Well, maybe I'll ambush you. I'm so sorry. Normally we wouldn't do this. But... It's okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I almost feel like dizzy from the relaxation. Could we sit? Yes. <sighs> first time that I flew today, the expectations were high and there was just a lot of excitement around it. I think I feel more aware of my body. I could feel where I had pain. I could feel, you know, parts of my back and parts of my neck that had pain, but the, the movement was totally unrestricted. I think the most surprising part of the floating was how energized I became in the little chamber in the little cabin. I'm very limited in my range of motion and how often or how quickly I can move. And in this warm water, I felt totally free. I was able to do some really deep stretching that really alleviated a lot of the tension that I felt in my shoulders and my neck, which is a very common area for pain with fibromyalgia. And so it was incredible to be able to move freely without any limitations and I think that freedom from pain is what gave me that that joy. Utilizing the float center on a treatment basis would be absolutely critical to my success and my sanity with treating fibromyalgia, with maintaining a quality of life with fibromyalgia. I would love to continue with this therapy because it's it's invaluable.